Hello. As was mentioned, my name is Joe Beyer uh, with Decision Resources. I'm an implementation consultant. I do some work with Burst now, um, and I've actually worked with it for quite a few years, uh, exposed to it on some other projects about five years ago, really. I think you're going to like this tool a lot. You saw a little bit earlier an end product, um, which is a dashboard, very interactive, really nice uh, looking presentation. We were able to pull in a lot of information in a very small space with that dashboard. And I'm going to show you uh, kind of the behind the scenes or the beginning of that process. So what you saw there was the finished product. I'm going to walk you through how you get to at least the beginning of something like that. And I think you'll appreciate how easy it is for uh, the average person uh, to do that, maybe with a little bit of help in setting up some data sets. There's something called projects, and these are all basically data sets with the joins already completed. Um, there are some dis different aspects to this, uh, but uh, quite simply, these are different sets of data. They can be the same tables behind them, uh, same connections, but with different transformations, different joins. Um, so and that's, you know, pretty simply how that works. And it's easy to create a new project. For the sake of time, I'm just going to show you a project I've already created and show you some of the options we have uh, for connecting to data. Uh, again, you can do simple flat files. So any Excel file, CSV file you have uh, will work. Um, but some of the neater things that uh, I wanted to make sure you understood is that you have many opportunities to connect to many different types of data. So we can connect to SQL databases. So for those of you who have on-prem uh, um, Cloud Suite Industrial, we can uh, do connections directly to, and when I say directly, we could have these uh, data sets update, you know, at two o'clock in the morning or when other processes aren't running and people aren't working, hopefully. We have Dropbox. So, you know, you can put cloud store, your cloud storage can be out there. Okay, and uh, we have Google Analytics for those marketing people who uh, do a lot of web-based marketing. Uh, you have that, Jira, some help desk, you know, some project management. Um, you can connect directly to that as well. Marketo for marketing people again. Um, we have any REST API, so that opens it up to um, you know many many applications on the cloud which are uh, that's pretty exciting something that's fairly new our server for those uh, you know quant type people uh, doing a lot of statistics you can cor connect directly to our server and then of course I think this is a big one and I think uh, in my experience it's important to be able to collect connect to Salesforce for a lot of organizations and I want to point out I think it's a big advantage is that you can access and connect your data sets in Salesforce to your ERP system without doing a complicated integration. I mean, I'm going to show you that here. Uh, what I've done is I've already pre-connected Salesforce um, and uh, a uh, Cloud Suite industrial data set that I've put into Dropbox. So we pushed it out there. Uh, again, this may be a very common way for a lot of people to uh, rather than connecting to SQL directly, you push everything out to Dropbox. Um, and I'll quickly show you kind of what the data set looks like. Um, you can do some edits and transformations here. You can uh, eliminate uh, certain columns if you want. Um, but this is just to give you a preview of what your data is. So my, in Salesforce, this is simple customer account data. And then, of course, I have my data set, which I brought in from Cloud Suite Industrial. Um, actually pushed it out to a flat file, and this is uh, basic orders information. Very powerful tools here. Uh, so what we'll do normally is we'll take that base data set, and we will, for presentation purposes and simplification purposes, uh, we'll convert it into what's called a um, prepared source. And so what I've done here is done some transformations or actually uh, taken that original set of data. And remember, this is all up in the up in Burst's cloud. I think it's on Amazon Web Services. Um, so you're pulling it into the cloud and then you can actually take that and 
uh, prepare it further. And so I've done, created some prepared sources here, and uh, there are some uh, some great transformations. You can see everything that you've done. So in this prepared source, I've taken my original Salesforce data set, and uh, I've ignored a couple columns. I've changed a date column. I've renamed a column. Um, so you can see all of these steps. And then you can add a step here, or you can just go up and uh, from here, you can do some different transformations. So you can see I could rename this column if I wanted to just state, for example. And I might as well go ahead and do that. And so you can see there that it just renamed that column. Pretty simple. And then we always have to publish all of our changes. We could do that at the end, but I might as well go ahead and do that now. Okay, and then let's jump back over to the other data set. And, and again, uh, by simply selecting a column, we can do some different things. And it'll pop up the options here. So we can split it. So let's just walk through this real, real quick. We can merge columns. We can append tables to column. We can add columns. So uh, you can create an index. Uh, for those of you, if you have a large data set, it's probably a good idea to create an index um, on a table. Uh, you can rename your columns as we did earlier. You can do some replacements, null handling. Uh, so if there's nothing there, there's some different options that we can use. We can filter the data. You can combine. You can split. You can remove. Summarizations can be done. You know, so a lot of stuff here. And then we can split rows. So again, it'll show you what you've done to your data set down here, and um, uh, some pretty powerful tools there for transforming your data. <clears throat> and then uh, the last part of this first phase um, in you know bringing in your data and preparing it is uh, you can actually do your joins. And again, I think this is a huge advantage over tools that I've used in the past. Um, very simple and easy to use. First has put a lot of development time into this uh, using HTML5. This is the future of the tool set. Um, you can uh, see that you can easily change the join. So for you know you database folks, you can change it to a left, right, or outer join. The default is your inner join. Um, and then, of course, I can change the column type. So this is useful. You, you can uh, change it to an attribute or a measure if that's appropriate. Um, so for those of you who don't know, attributes might be the where, the who, the uh, you know the how, the when, and then the measure is actually what's being counted, right? So, um, uh, and then you can use some in certain cases that you might want a uh, a column or field to be both a attribute and a measure. So hopefully that gives you a, a quick idea of how you can. Um, you know, very easily transform your data. I think this is an incredibly powerful uh, and simple tool to use. So now we'll jump back a little bit more about uh, the interface. Um, real quick, you can do some networking with other projects or data sets within your organization. I think uh, this is kind of a game changer in that it really simplifies um, how you connect to, you know, if you have a, a data set that's being used in accounting and you want here in marketing, you would be able to connect uh, data <clears throat> within the organization very easily through Burst. Um, you know, it's not in a silo somewhere that you can't access it. So Visualizer is the reporting tool. And, uh, you know, you can do some, some really nice reports, which we can actually see. Uh, when we go into dashboards. OK, um, so we've gone into dashboards, and uh, we can create a new dashboard here. And um, what what I'm in is the edit mode for this dashboard. And uh, I'll, you can do what's called uh, create data-driven dashboards, which allow you to limit data uh, available to to the dashboard, there's uh, some real advantages to this, and that you can uh, expose only certain things. 
um, you can limit your data set so it's a little uh, more efficient. So those kinds of things. But what I wanted to show you is uh, so we can get you to the point where uh, at least you can imagine where we ended up in that previous dashboard in the webinar. Um, we can add a KPI really simply. And so again, we'll pick our measure. Uh, we'll do quantity ordered. And I'm going to put a little chart in there. Actually, why don't we do this? We'll move that down. Um, we can put an indicator in. And uh, again, quantity ordered. Give us a little indicator of whether it's up or down. I'm going to put a little chart in here. And we'll do by time. And I'm going to go um, by month. How about week of year? And we'll go week of month. And so I've easily created a quick KPI. It looks like our order trend is up. You can see uh, how simple that was just quickly adding a KPI that gives you some good information. I, my orders are up um, and they're trending up. And uh, this is how many I had in the in the current, uh, I believe that's week, actually maybe month. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, we can also do some nice, easy uh, visuals just to make this uh, a little prettier, a little more dynamic for the user. Um, and uh, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. And, you know, very nice, very easy to do, simple dashboard building with a lot of, a lot of potential, a lot of information there. Hopefully you're seeing the potential uh, more than actually what I've created, but <clears throat> you get the idea. So um, we can put in an existing report. I don't... Uh, don't want to do that right now, but I'll add an, a report and show you again how you, how simple that is to do. So uh, I'm going to go with, um, let's go with quantity shipped. And uh, so quantity shipped. And then what's going to be useful? So you can get a, get a feel for this uh, interface. Um, we have our measures, which I just showed you, and I added quantity shipped. And I can do groupings. Um, I can create other expressions if I want to. But in this case, what I want to do is show you how that Salesforce data set's available. And so remember, this is two different, two different tables. Um, and actually, I don't think I want to do that. I don't want to count site. I want to go by accidentally quick too quickly there. <clears throat> and we are going to go, remember I renamed this to state. And so we're going to see how that looks. And this isn't pretty. So, you know, that that's not easy to view. Um, it's pretty apparent that we do most of our shipping into New York State. Uh, but to give you a flavor of how easy this is, we can create a pie chart simply. Of course, this is New York. So again, it uh, looks like our second biggest state is California. So we can see that really easily right off the bat. We can do some other transformations. We can create a table out of this data, if that makes sense. And uh, Again, not real pretty. It's telling us that we're missing our data set's not perfect. Uh, we're missing some states on some of those customers, it looks like. So uh, let's do uh, what I think is a really cool transformation of this data set or this uh, presentation. We're going to do a geo map. And Uh, you can see that it's pretty easy to do a transformation of that data into something that looks really nice. And again, it's same information. We have our data uh, by state and
color coded to give you uh, a picture of where you're doing business. And And there you go. I mean, uh, you know, we could do some other things and edit this and make it a little prettier and put some uh, put some frills in there and all of that. But that's basically how you uh, can start your creation of your dashboard. And hopefully, uh, we're that's about the amount of time I had allocated. Uh, of course, we could spend all day probably putting together a really complex and um, exciting, more exciting dashboard with some filtering. Um, to, you know, there's so much opportunity here uh, to use the potential um, of burst. You know, there's there's a lot uh, we can add filters to different um, reports on the dashboard to the dashboard itself. Uh, we can change the layout, obviously. We can put some background on the dashboard, and I can put a picture, or I can, you know, drop in a website or HTML or embed uh, embed the filter into the report. Of course, images, which we saw, you know, you can put your logo in there. So, again, ton of ton of potential, ton of opportunity, um, and relatively, I think, easy to do.